Are you hungry today? Put your Bible over your head. Say it like you mean it. This is my Bible. I can have what it says I can have. I can do what it says I can do. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I am ready to receive the infallible Word of God. Having received the Word of God, I will, I will do the Word of God. Outstanding. All right, well, let's turn to our proof text, which is in um, Galatians. We're talking about building a stronger family. Building a stronger family. Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5, and starting with verse 22, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. Today I want to talk to you about faithfulness. Everybody say faithfulness. Everybody say faithfulness. How many like people that you can count on? My dad is so faithful. If he said he's going to pick you up, he's going to pick you up. And most of the time, he'll be 15 minutes early. That's just how he was. It still is. It's faithful. Just you can count on him. The fruit of the Spirit, the Bible says, brings about this faithfulness. Now, uh, we could talk about faithfulness in many areas, and all the areas are good. For instance, we could talk about men being faithful to their wives. And certainly, when the uh, the fruit of the Spirit, when it talks about faithfulness, that would certainly include that you would be consistently faithful to your wife, right? Or we could talk about being faithful to your husband. And certainly that would apply if we're talking about building stronger families, that would apply. So I'm not saying it doesn't apply here. I'm just saying I only got so much time to teach. So um, today, one of the main applications that is meant in the text is this faithfulness that we would have to God. Is this making sense? How I many know we need to be faithful to God? We need to be consistently in love with God. And, and, and listen, and, and understand this that how it relates to the family is, uh, how many would like to see everyone in your family saved? Raise your hand if you'd like to see everybody in your family saved. Raise your hand if you'd like, not, you know, I mean, I mean not saved, but I mean just totally sold out to God. How many would like everyone in your family completely sold out to God? Well, can I tell you how you're going to get that? You be completely faithful to God. So, how this relates in everything I'm going to talk to, because I, I, I want to put it into this series. So I could talk about faithfulness and talk about faith and be faithful to God and, and not get done. And you think, oh, that's a nice sermon, but that didn't fit into the series. No, no, no. This completely fits in the series. You want a strong family? Start being faithful to God. Start being consistently, totally, completely sold out to God. The more sold out to God you are, the more you will rub off, or off on your family and the stronger family you'll have. The more spiritual, listen, understand this. The more spiritual your family is, the more spiritual, the more spiritual you are, the more spiritual they'll be, and the more spiritual everyone is, it'll cause us to be stronger. That's what the Bible says. Uh, please understand this. What our country needs to do is come back to God. See, l listen to me very carefully. Are you, are you all listening to me? 
this thought, this, this, this political thought that says, I am, I am, uh, I am, uh, how do they say it? They say, I'm, um, economic, economically I'm conservative, but socially I'm liberal. You know what? I, I'm, I'm just telling you, listen, please, please understand this. That the more foundational you are, uh, please, I, I, I've, I've talked to you this before, but repetition is the motor of learning. The more spiritual you are, the more prosperous you'll be. Any country on this earth, the, the more carnal we get in America, the less we will be an economic power on this world. Because the reality is God brings prosperity. D doesn't it say this in James? All good gifts come down. Where do they come down from? Not from man's good idea. They all come down from God. God is the source of goodness. God is the source of blessing. And you know what? And the farther you get, the closer you get to God, the more blessed your life's going to be. The farther you get away from God, the less blessed your life will be. The closer you get to God, the more blessed your family will be. The farther away you get from God, the less blessed your family will be. Is this making sense to somebody besides Tony? Amen. Thank you. So everything I say is going to be related to the family in that if you are consistent to God and will be on fire for Christ, then you know what? Your life is going to be good. Your family is going to be stronger. <clears throat> Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, you know this, but we'll have it up here on the screen. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Everybody say new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. How many know, you know, it's so critical that you understand who you are in Jesus Christ. And, and that you identify with that new nature, that you, you, that you pay attention to who you really are, that you are able to recognize yourself. And not, not, listen, and not the old nature. Stop identifying with who you were and start to identify with who you are. Does this make sense? True story. Uh, Russell Christoph, who lived in California, uh, took some pictures uh, or had pictures taken of himself and uh, about 15 years ago. And he was offered, you know, two hundred dollars for the pictures. And um, Taster's Choice said, "If we use these pictures, we'll compensate you. We'll give you more." Fifteen years after he took these pictures, he's in a grocery store, and he looks down at one of the shelves and he sees a um, a Taster's Choice coffee with his picture on it. He only he he never was given anything except that two hundred dollars. They told him that if they used it, they'll give him more. They never gave him a penny more except the two hundred dollars. Guess what? A judge gave him a little bit more. True story. He, you know what? The judge awarded him fifteen point six million dollars. How many how many know that was a good day to go to the grocery store? Amen? He said, Pastor, what's my point? My point is, you know what? It's good to recognize who you are. Is that not right? And for us to recognize who we are in Christ Jesus is absolutely critical. Now, let me say this. There's three places. There's a place of commitment. Everybody say the place of commitment. Okay. Look at your neighbor and say, that's who you are. Okay. There's a place of compromise. Just shake your head, okay? There's a place of compromise. And 
there's a third place of confusion. Say it like this. You can go from passionately in love with God to lukewarm to listen to me. Listen to me. I'll show you the scripture on it just in case you don't believe me. To completely lost. I mean completely lost. Do, do any of you know anyone who used to be not just, not just like, oh, they came to church every once in a while, but they were on fire for Christ. I'm not asking you to, to tell me their names. I'm just saying, did you ever know anybody who was completely, totally on fire for Christ, and now they don't even believe in God? Or maybe they believe in God, but they're so far away from God, they're like, I don't, you know what I mean, just not into that anymore. Does anybody know anybody like that? Can you raise your hand if you know anybody like that? Say, can I, can I be honest with you? I want to talk to you seriously about this because we can we can become like that. And the Bible says the fruit of the Spirit is, you know what, one of the things the fruit of the Holy Spirit is, is you need to be faithful. You need to be a consistent person towards the things of God. So where do you stand? Where are you? Where are you? It's interesting because Harvard, Yale, Princeton. You ever hear of those schools? Harvard, Yale, Princeton. Do you know, if I said, what do all those schools have in common? What would you say? say, Well, they're all, I heard it. They're they're all Ivy League schools. Can you tell you, can I tell you what else they had in common? These are some of the most ungodly schools that you could go to. I'm telling you the truth. They were all originally, not, not only Christian, they were all originally Bible schools. How in the world did did Harvard and Princeton and Yale get so off their moorings? Can I tell you what? Everyone can do it. And part of the part of the problem is that you think that it'll never happen to you. Can I tell you what? Can 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 I can I tell you the truth? Um, And I'm going to try not to get into Sunday sermon tonight but um but this is a good precursor for sunday because the truth is in this world p- please understand this in this world um how many know the bible says that the wide the, the the road is wide that leads to destruction and many are there who go by it is that what it says but it says but narrow is the way that leads to what to everlasting life and how many go by that way few so most of the people are going what? The wrong way. Most of them going the wrong way, right? And if you just stop and go with the flow, how many know there's a flow? And the flow is going not where the few are going, but the flow is going. And because there's many, how many know the, the, that current is intense? I remember I, I probably told you this, this story, but when I was in high school, I was, a, I was on the swim team, and the coach said one time, I'm going I'm to show you guys how to swim, you know what, three times faster than you've ever swam before, and I'm going to show it to you today. Today, I'm going to show you how to do it. Well, we're like, oh, my, three times faster. You know what I mean? I mean, you'd work half the season just to shave a, you know, a second off your time. And he's saying, I'm going to show you how to be, we're going to be three times faster, and you're going to do it today. We all got in the pool, and we started going around, all the same way, going around and around and around. And we were going around for a long time, 20 minutes. And then all of a sudden, he said, okay, told somebody to get out, and he said, okay, now swim. And sure enough, as soon as they jumped in, I mean, boom, 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 two strokes, and you're already down on the other side. What's my point? My point is there's this flow that flows the wrong way. And as a Christian, listen to me, all you have to do is stop. And before you know it, you're going to be four blocks down. I remember when I, when I would go surfing in Newport Beach, and sometimes I'd start surfing on, on 26th Street, and sometimes I'd get out of the water, and I'd be at 58th Street. 
I think, man, I didn't know I was, you know what I mean? Now I've got to walk all the way home. What happened? Man, that current just pulled me. And that's what happens. There's this pull because so many people are going the wrong way. And as, listen, as Christians, if, if, if you just, you have to be very, very, this is Sunday sermon, you have to be, be very, very purposeful. Every say purposeful. To go the other way. But God wants you to be persistent, consistent, steadfast. He, he, he wants to be able to count on you. He doesn't, remember, remember, uh, remember when Jesus kept on coming and, and he, he took his three top guys to the garden, takes them to the garden, and he keeps on coming back. He's like, dudes, you know what I mean? You're here to pray. Can you pray, please? You know what I mean? And you know what? And we don't, we, we don't read the response but the res- you know, you're thinking, you know what, they're probably going, oh, yeah, sorry, sorry, we're good, we're good, we're good. Oh, no, no, we got it. But then it seems like, you know, I'm reading into that, but it seems like that's what they're saying because every time he comes back, they're sleeping again. He's like, guys! <laughs> See, God, that, that's, that's, what this, that's what this fruit of the Holy Spirit is. Faithfulness is that every time God comes to you, you're faithful. You're consistent. You don't, you, it, it's not like you, you go, oh, okay, I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a tithe this week. What? No, no, really. God would be, God would be like, you're going to what? I mean, no, you can't tithe this week. I mean, you can begin to tithe this week. But if you tithe this week and then don't tithe next week or the week after and then decide to tithe the, you know, the fourth week but not the fifth and the sixth and the seventh, how many know that's not a tithe anymore, amen? And God is looking for this consistency in our lives, in all our lives. Philippians chapter 3, Philippians chapter 3, verses 14 and 15. Look at this. I press towards the goal. Every say, I press. I press, I press towards the goal for the prize of the upward calling of God in, Jesus, in Christ Jesus. Therefore, let us, as many as are mature, have this mind. What's this mind? Man, I ain't coming off it. Have this mind that if anything you think otherwise, God will reveal even this to you. If there's even a shadow, God's going to reveal it to you, and what you're going to do is go, uh-uh. You're going to be quick to go. See, you, you, you want to be so consistent that you're going to be open to God revealing some inconsistency in your life that you would quickly be able to go, uh-uh, I don't want to do that. But in order to do that, everybody say, I got to press. You have to press. I like what uh, the, the message. Do we have the message version? version? Look at, look at, no, just a 14, 15 verse. Well, we could, we, yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's keep focused on the goal. <laughs> let's keep focused on the goal. Those of us who want everything God has for us. Do you want everything God has for you? Oh, okay, well, then you have to keep focused, amen? You have to be consistent. Okay, Every, those, uh, um, those of us who want everything that God has for us, if any of you have something else in mind, something less than total commitment, God will clear your blurred vision. <clears throat> You'll see it yet. You're, you're, you're like, God, but there's this attitude. Listen, the attitude of this scripture is God Show it to me because I don't want to not be totally committed. That's what faithfulness is. It's every time he goes to you, he can count on you. Totally committed. Faithful. Are you learning something? Um, Ephesians, uh, it's interesting because the, the Ephesians, 
um, the church at Ephesus, when Paul writes, one of the things that he noticed is their acts of love. If you read in Ephesians, he's talking and he's giving an example. Man, this awesome church that walk in love. And yet, and yet, in Revelation chapter 2, verse 4, talking about that church in Ephesus, God says this, Nevertheless, I have this against you, that you have left your first love. And this happens in churches. How many know as a church, how many know Hope Community can, can be focused, can be on fire for Christ, can, can, can be committed? <clears throat> because how many know this building, how many know this building can't be to committed to Christ? Hello, somebody here? How many know this building can't be committed to Christ? You know what I mean? Like, like, like the building is just a building. It's not, you know what I mean? That's, you know, whatever, uh, you know, the steeple, the wood that they build the steeple with. You know what I mean? It's not the, like the wood's not alive. The wood's not like, oh, we're going to hold up the cross. You know what I mean? No, it's just wood. But how many know we can be committed? The people can be on fire for Christ. The people can be, I, I was so blessed when we, uh, when we needed all this, all, all the, uh, we needed a bunch of digging done because we're going to put these uh, lights in. And me and Ray and, and Roland were out there and we were out there all week and when we were done, I thought, oh, you know, we'll, we're going to dig all this up and, and we'll all be done. You know what I mean? And so I'll go out there and help them. You know what I mean? So I went out there and helped them. In one week, we, I mean, we had enough for like one and a half lights. At this point in time, we're going to be done like somewhere in like eight months, you know. And I was like, man, that's bogus. I don't, and and just, just almost just spur of the moment, it was a Sunday. And without any, I just, just spur of the moment, I recognized, oh, my goodness, there's a holiday coming up tomorrow. And here's what I said. I said, I don't got shovels for you guys. Don't come here and go, oh, don't go to shovel. You go to shovel? Because I don't want 30 guys all sharing three shovels. So either get a shovel, or if you don't have a shovel, go over to Home Depot, you know, spend $14.99 and get a shovel and come on over here with the shovel. And I, I don't, we're not going to work all day. I just want you to work. Show up at 8 o'clock, and we'll be all done by 1130. And I showed up, and, and, and me and Tamara showed up, and it was such a blessing. By the, and, and by the time we got here, and we, we were early, but by the time we got here, there were already like 15 guys here. We pulled up. I was like, praise God. And by, by the start time, by 8 o'clock, there was 30 guys there. By 8.30, we had almost 40 guys with shovels in their hands. And by 11.30, it was all dug up. It was all done. How many know, how many know what one, one of your expressions of love to God, how many know talk is cheap, you know what I mean? I talk all you want, you know what I mean? But see, in, understand, but a church needs to be on fire for Christ, and that, that expression of love needs to be expressed in giving. Amen. Isn't that what, what, what James says? You know, you're like, oh, praise God. Be blessed. Be fed. You know what? You know, somebody's hungry. You're like, oh, man, be fed. Be warm. You know what I mean? I know you got short sleeve shirt on, but be warm. You know what I mean? You know, bundle up. It's cold out there. You know, James like, really? No, see, our unfireness needs to be expressed in a tangible way. And, and Paul said it like this. You want, you want to talk about your faith? I'll show you my faith by what I do. Amen. Amen. Is this making sense to anybody? So we've got to be faithful, consistent, all the time. Everybody say all the time. 
when you look at David, you, you look at David and you see somebody who was committed. Not a, I'm not talking about a perfect person, but I'm talking about this guy was committed to Christ. And so even when he fell, he was quick to repent. I mean, once he knew it, he was quick to repent. And the Bible says in the New Testament that he was, he's, he's a man after God's heart. God loved, God loved David because David was in love with God and he was consistent. He was committed. But Solomon, not so much. How many know this is true? And even though Solomon came back to the things of God, but man, he would just, I mean, if you looked at his life, he was not committed. He was, he was pleasure-minded, not committed-minded. And then you look at their, then you look at Solomon's son, Rehoboam, and this guy was like, oh my, this guy was confused at best. This guy was one of the most mixed up kings in all of Judea. And, and think about it for a minute. Can I talk to your parents for a minute? The, your, you know what your kids need? Your kids need you to be consistent. I didn't say perfect, but they need, <coughs> they need you to be consistent. I'm telling you what, your, your kids need to see your faith more than they hear your faith. I'm not saying that they don't need to hear your faith, but they need to see you. You know what? Oh, yeah. You know what? Mom's praying. She always gets up and prays. Oh, yeah, Dad's reading his Bible. He always, always does that. And, and Rehoboam didn't have that. His, his father was, was just inconsistency. And, it, it, and, and understand this. Um, ultimately, your kids will make their choices um, no matter what. But you set them up for success as you are consistent. And you know what? You say, yeah, but pastor, I don't know what to do. My kids, I already blew it. My kids are, are already grown. Hey, um, I'm not talking about, uh, you know, none of us have a time machine. But what we do have is we have the blood of Jesus that can cause us to move forward and, you know what, and go forward, right? Is this making sense? So we see this inconsistent. We see it with, with Abraham. Abraham was awesome. Abraham, as soon as he, 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 he went to a new place, you know, the first thing he did? The first thing he did is he would build an altar to worship God. You know what the second thing he'd do? He'd dig a well. First build an altar, then he'd dig a well. Yeah. Isaac, you know what he did? You know the first thing Isaac did? Dug a well. And then most of the time, he'd make an altar. But not all the time. See, see, see they go from this consistency to this less consistent to then... Uh, Jacob, and Jacob was just, again, just all over the page. Joshua. Joshua, the Bible says, he knew the Lord, and he knew the works of the Lord. Second generation after Joshua, they knew about the Lord, and they knew about the works of the Lord. Third generation, the Bible says in Judges chapter 2, verse 10, Judges chapter 2, verse 10 says this, Uh, guys, did I give that to you? Judges chapter 2, verse 10 says this. Then all the generations had been gathered to their fathers. Another generation arose after them who did not know the Lord. So quickly, let, let me talk about, uh, let me, well, let me say this first. So you got a black dog and you got a white dog. Same size. Same age, you know what I mean? They fight. Who wins? The one who you, the one who you feed the most. And 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 what do we have? We have this battle between you know what that rages in us all the time. That's why it's so critical that you feed on the Word of God, that you put the Word of God. Again, Jesus said, "My words are spirit and they're life." Remember, you've got to make decisions based on your what. On your spirit. For the just shall live by their faith. For we walk by faith, not by sight. 
Is this making sense? So let's talk about the three E's. The three E's. Number one, you know what? In order to be consistent, to be faithful, you've got to understand. You've got to have an example, and you've got to be an example. First E is example. Jesus says in John 13, 15, look what he says. For I have given you an example that you should do as I have done to you. You know what? God is, is, is what is he? He's, uh, he's um, uh, Emmanuel, God with us. God, God not only, God shows us. Jesus is our example that I'm going to show you exactly what to do. <clears throat> Matthew chapter 20, verse 8. Matthew chapter 20, verse 8. Look at this. Just as the Son of Man did not come to serve to, to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. Jesus is our example. He didn't come to be served. He came to what? He came to serve. He's our example. Philippians chapter 3, verse 17. Philippians chapter 3, verse 17. Brethren, join in, in, in following my example and note those, watch this, who so walk as you have us for a pattern. See, let me tell you what. Uh, 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 <clears throat> the other day, I was, uh, I was with the interns, and I was teaching them, and it was, it was, it was raining outside. And I was teaching them about um, uh, really developing a, a bad attitude towards leaders. And I said, and I taught them, and I'll teach you, that um, it's easy to, to get a bad attitude towards leaders, and here's what happens. You start to judge those leaders based on perceptions that might not even be true. So here's what I did. I said, let's say I said, it, and it was really coming down. I said, let's, let's say I say, hey, we're all going to go out there. We're going to come out here. We're going to run to that wall, and we're going to run back. I said, you guys could think, man, that's, that's not right. You know, doesn't to pastor care about? We could catch a cold. You know, and doesn't cast, you know, you, you know, our hair could get messed up. You know, we could fall and slip in the mud. And, you know what I mean? All this stuff. Listen, I sat there and I said, now, you give me 12 reasons why. This is a great, li listen to me. This is a great test because you guys can do the same thing. And you mainly cop an attitude towards your leaders. Do you know that? And we can do it even in the church. And so how many knows that's exactly what Satan would love? I said, now you guys come up with 12 good reasons. Good reasons why it would be good for me, for us all to run up there, touch that wall, and run back. You know, they came up with 12 incredible reasons. I mean, really good ones. Here's my point. My point is that when, when, uh, when, when, when I said, I said, okay, well, today we might run to that wall. And we, might, and we might do it in the rain. And somebody said, somebody said, are you going to do it, Pastor, with us? Listen to me. And you know what? You know how I responded? Here's how I responded. I said, listen, I will never ask you to do something that I'm not willing to do. I just won't do it. Well, that, that's, that's what Paul's saying. He's saying, listen, listen, listen. L look, brethren, join in the following, following my example. Join. It's what I'm doing. And note those who so walk. There, it's not just me. There's some other people around here that are, that are faithful, that are doing the right thing. I mean, great, look at Tamar and I. Let us be an example. I hope we are an example. But it's not just Tamara and I. There's a bunch of people who are serving God, full, I mean, full with their full hearts. Watch this. As you have us as a what? See, understand, you know what? You have an example. His name is Jesus Christ. And he says, you know what? I want you to follow me. I want you to be imitators of me. And understand that he wants you to be an example to other people. 
I mean, get on the pattern. Amen. And you say, oh, there's nobody, you know, everybody's not serving, everybody's not serving, nobody's serving God, nobody's serving God, nobody's serving God. That's not even true. There's a bunch of people serving God. And there might, be a, there, there might be more people not serving God, but who cares? I'm not looking at those people, amen? I'm not criticizing those people. I'm getting those people. I'm just saying those people are coming in, amen? They're going to start following our pattern. But don't be deceived. Don't, don't start whining in your Cheerio. I'm the only, I'm the only one who, who walks in love. I'm the only one who gives. I'm the only one. No, you're not, amen? Amen. And if you're not part of that pattern, get in the pattern, amen? Get in the cadence, you know what I mean? You know, you know do the hustle. Come on, somebody. Okay, some of you young guys, you're like, what is he even doing, okay? Okay, get, you know what? Get in the pattern. Get in the cadence. I said, that is good, huh, Tony? Amen. Okay, I don't know about that, but anyway. <clears throat> Amen. Now I'm all out of, now I don't even know where I'm at in my notes. Okay, okay example. Amen. We, we need to move on. Okay, number, number two, quickly, environment. Environment. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 19. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 19. Now, therefore, you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but watch this, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. Everybody do this. Say, of the, you got to get your hands up. Household of God. See, thank you. Household. Listen, we're in the household of God. It's, listen, this is, and, and, and we live in a society that we, you know what? It's kind of like the, you know, you go over to Starbucks and, 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 and what do you see? You see, you, you see, you know what? Tables set up like this with just two chairs. Is that not right? And I'm like, okay, I, you know what? I got my. And what do you? You go into Starbucks, and what do you see? You see these people. You know what? They got their Starbucks, their cool cat. You know what I mean? They got the, the you know, skinny jeans on. You know what I mean? And and they and they got the computer. They're like, okay, I'm by myself. I got my headphones on. I'm. I am by myself. I like to be by myself. I am the center of my universe. So I'm fine. And so, and, and, and listen, and we take that mentality into, but listen, that is not what God's into. God is into this. You know what? You are part of a big old family. You know, sometimes in, in prayer, last week in prayer, we had people and they come and, you know, you know they're, they're, not, they're not trying to be rude, but you know what? They, you know, somebody comes a little late, and they sit there, and then somebody comes in a little late, and they sit there, and by the time, you know what, I, I, I stand up to, to, uh, to close the, the prayer time, it, it's, it's it, you know what, it's scattered buckshot, you know what I mean? So I say, hey, you know what, come on in, and I make everybody sit together, I mean, t- together, you know what I mean? I mean, together, no maroon, you know, that's why I say, no maroon. You say, why, why are you doing that? I'm not doing that to make you uncomfortable. I'm doing that that you would actually, that you would become comfortable. We're just so used to, you know what? Hey, you're in my space. You're in my space. You're in my space. Hey, well, you know what? That's not, that's not, a, that's not the God mentality. God is, you know what the Bible says in Acts? They were all, they were hanging out every day at the apostles' feet, they're all hanging out together. From house to house, they went breaking bread. They were there's just this, there was just this community of being together. You want to be, listen, you want to be faithful? Get an example and you be an example. You want to you, you wanna be faithful? You want to be consistent? Understand that you, we, we need to be together. And understand this, it's the sheep. You know what sheep get picked off from the wolves? Because, let me tell you, Satan is a jive turkey. You know what I mean? Can I tell you that? You don't know what that is, young people? Just look it up in the dictionary, okay? Google it, jive turkey, okay? Satan is a jive turkey. I'm telling you, he's a jive turkey. And what I mean, I mean, he's got, he, you know what? He picks off, you, you know, he, 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 he doesn't go after the strong sheep. 
he goes after the weak sheep. And you know where the weak sheep are? The weak sheep are the farthest away from the shepherd. Farthest away from the shepherd. And that's who he picks off. Hey, hang out, be close. Be, be, let your friends be people who go to hope. If you don't know other people at hope, then be proactive and you know what? And you know what? Meet somebody. You know, Jesse, wave your hand. That's Jesse, okay? Uh, now you, I just introduced you to Jesse, okay? John, raise your hand. That's John. Peter, Peter, wave your hand. That's Peter. You know what I mean? And see, you know what? Let me tell you. Peter and Jesse and John all know each other. They all hang out because they're smart guys. Amen. Gabby, too. Amen. Thank you, Gabby. Raise your hand. Thank you. That's Gabby. All right. Okay, I, I got to move on. Okay. Number, uh, number three. Okay, so, so we've got to... Um, We've got to have examples. We've got to be an example. We have to understand that we are in this environment. Number three, you've got to, listen, you've got to experience. Everybody say experience. See, God, God is a relational God. You want to be consistent? You've got to experience his love. You've got to, experience, you've got to be in fellowship with, here's what the Bible says. The Bible says that Jesus stands at the door and knocks. And, 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 and if you read it in Revelation, we always, we always use that scripture as like a scripture for the non-Christian. Stands at the door and knocks, and you know what? And the open, but you know what? Read it in, in its text. It's not even talking about non-Christians. God is standing at the door, at your door, and he's knocking. And he's saying, hey, um, Want to have lunch? Want, want, want to hang out with me? We need to experience God. And, and number, uh, well, go to Ephesians chapter 1. E, go, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 18. The eyes of your, l- l- listen what, what, what God wants. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you might know what is the hope of your calling. You know what? What is the riches of the glory of the inheritance of the saints? God wants you to know who you are in Christ. You, you need to experience God. And, and fourth, and we'll close with this, the, the, you have to. You want to be consistent? You want to be faithful? Number one, you have to understand you have an example. You have to be an example. Number two, you have to understand that, that you have to create this environment. You know what? Number four, you have to experience God. You need to experience God. I can't experience God for you. You have to experience God. And number five, you have to examine. You have to, you have to be willing to be examined. Examination. Now this, uh, this sometimes is tough. Why? Because... How many, how many ever find out a truth about yourself and when you find out you don't like it? You know, you're like, <laughs> you know, you, you, put on, you put on a pair of jeans and you're like, man, you know what? <laughs> Why did my wife put him in the dryer for so long? <laughs> hey, um, I don't know, maybe it, has, maybe it has nothing to do with the dryer. You know, maybe it has something to do with, you know what, the four jelly donuts that you were being eaten. I don't know. But you don't understand what I'm saying? We don't, you know, that, that kind of thing. We're like, ah, you know what? Examination. But I, but I have several scriptures that, I'm, that I believe will help you. Examination. 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5. Look at what the Bible says. Examine yourself. Everybody say examine yourself. Examine yourself. See, have a willingness to look at yourself and, and judge yourself and try to judge things fairly. You know what I mean? How I many know we always give ourselves the benefit of the doubt? Try to examine yourself fairly. Examine yourself as to whether you are in the faith. Test yourself. 
do you not know yourselves? Look at this. That Jesus Christ is in you? Unless indeed you are disqualified? How many know, how many know you can be disqualified? How many know you can be disqualified? So what? So, but God doesn't want you to be disqualified. So what is, examine yourself. Um, Matthew chapter 7, look at this. Matthew chapter 7, verse 21. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. I, mean, I say you can be disqualified. Okay, watch this. But he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Well, you've got to look and see. Are you just a talker? Many will say to me in that day. Every say many. many. Okay. We'll say to that, Lord, Lord, we have, uh, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many works in your name? Now stop right here. They are saying we did this and we did that, we did that, we did this. Listen to what God responds. Listen to what, how many know God is the one who's going to tell them the truth? See, they, they're, not exam, they're not really examining their life. They're not being honest with themselves. Next. And then I will declare to them. I'm going to declare what is truth. I never knew you. Depart from me. Watch this. You who practice lawlessness. You're saying, don't we do all these good things? Jesus is going to say, no, that's not who you are. That's who you think you were. But you never examined yourself. Look, yeah, this is a wow. You know, like the apostles. You know what? When they were going home, did they think, man, we kept on falling asleep. Did they think that? Were they willing to look at them and say, man, we blew it? Or, were they, or, or because this is what we do, we blame others. You know what I mean? It, you, know, you know, Adam, oh, wasn't me, God. And it was this dingy lady you gave me. You know what I mean? Right? You know, so they were going home. And, I don't know. You know, I don't know why he's got us up so late at night. Of course we're going to fall asleep. And, and, and how many know we can do that? We can, because we're legends in our own minds, are we not? Watch this, watch this, watch this. Um, look, at, uh, look at James. Look at James. Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, go to James, guys. But be doers of the word and not hearers only. Watch this. What are the next two words? Deceiving yourself. How, how many know what's so scary about deceiving yourself? You don't know. Lord, Lord, we did all this good stuff. And he's going to declare. That's just what you're saying. You've got to, listen, if you want to be consistent, and do you really want to be consistent? Do you really want to be, if you really want to be faithful, then here's what you, you've got to, um, ladies, is for you too, you've got to man up and have a willingness to, that's just a phrase, but you've got to man up and be willing to look yourself and say, man, I, I, I wrote it in a text um, today. Did you get my, my email? Here's what I said. I said, you know what? It's, it's, it's cold and it's wet out. My dad used to say this. He said, when the going gets tough, the tough get going. Something like this. I hope to see you tonight. We come up with so many excuses why we, some, so many silly excuses of why we don't have to go to church. Wow, it got real quiet in here. So, Pastor, but I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. Okay, uh, well, you know what? Uh, okay, praise God, you are here. Thank God that you're here. But, but have a willingness to look at critical things in your life. H have, here, here's a, here's a good one. Have a, and, and guys, don't be too harsh. Make sure you're not, you know, you're like, oh, now's my opportunity. You know what I mean? No, no. But, but, but ladies, ask your husband, hey, is, is there areas in my life that I could, could work on? And be gracious. You know what I mean? Don't, don't, don't get your club out. And, and vice versa, men, ask your wives. Ladies, ladies, don't you know, keep your clubs away. Be gentle. But you know what? But how many know you're going to get a perspective? And then don't get all, you know what, all, you know, like me. You know, don't get all babified on that. You know, you, know, you ask her, amen. 
Yeah, but you, it's your fault, Pastor. You told me to ask her. Okay, well, I didn't tell you anything. I'm just telling you what the Bible said. The Bible says, examine yourself. Yeah, but you didn't say have your wife examine me. Okay, well, I'm just giving, I'm just giving you a clue. Here, here's why. Because we all have blind spots. You know what? And, and now I'll get into Sunday sermon. I, 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 I want to teach a Sunday. I want you to come back Sunday. I want to teach a Sunday and, and talk about 2016. And, and talk about 2016. Because God wants us. He wants us to thrive in 2016. But in order to do it, we, we've really got to be faithful. We've got to be consistent. You know, listen, roller coasters are great at Magic Mountain. But I don't want my life to be like this concerning my, you know, oh, I love God. Oh, I'm in, you know, on, oh, I'm, you know, on, I'm backslid. Oh, I love God. Oh, I'm backslid. Or maybe in you say, oh, I'm not backslid. I don't, you know, I don't, I don't get drunk anymore. And then there's all these other things that you're doing, and you know they're wrong. And God says, no, listen, that, it just come to me, be sold, just sell out to me. Be consistent. Be on fire. Let me, let me go full circle. You want to create an awesome family? That's what you need to do. You know what? Just get sold out to God. You'll, 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 you'll look. It won't even take a year. You'll look in three months and go, oh, my goodness. My life is so much better. All right. Let's close in prayer. Father, we just thank you for, um, for speaking to us tonight. Father, we hear you. And we want to be obedient to you. We want to be faithful to you. We want to be consistent all the time. So, Father, we, uh, we just ask for your help. We thank you for the Holy Spirit will help us. Father, we thank you. People come back Sunday. May this place be packed. All our services, Father. We thank you that you're filling this place as, as we continue to teach the word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Can you say amen?